Feelings and emotions tend to prompt communication when we have disagreement. And that's tricky for a couple reasons. One is I, I've studied conflict for three decades. And what I witness is, is when you begin with feelings and emotions, it's really easy to go off the rails with that communication because the fact is, is a lot of times it's not handled properly and it gets to feel like an attack. So that is one reason. The other reason is I think that we really need to make a distinction between feelings and emotions. You know, emotional intelligence is a, um, really takes the lead right now in terms of professional development. And there's a good reason for that because throwing those emotions into um, our communication really does take things off the rails. So now I have three suggestions to, if you have differences and you want to create collaboration and bring out the best in the people that you live with and you work with, there are three other options that are much better than beginning with your feelings or emotions. And they, and they all fit together. So, if you so let's get on to these three things. Now, before I do, I first wanna just talk and describe what the difference is between feelings and emotions. And again, either one can be problematic in the work I've done with people for three decades around conflict. Feel, here's an example. I might feel angry. That's a feeling. Or I can be really angry. That's an emotion. <laughs> so the distinction is a feeling is something that we typically are aware of. It's, it tends to be internal. Um, it tends to be, a, a, we have more clarity and balance around it. An emotion, I like to use, think about that word, emotion energy in motion. And that's where we can become unleashed, um, throw energy on somebody else or something else, or we can actually even do ourselves damage because we can internalize those emotions as well. And that's, that's just really an important distinction. Spiral impact, which is my work, my body of work, is grounded in a martial art called Aikido. It's all very much around spirals. And actually Aikido is called the art of peace, but yes, it is a very active martial art. Um, but but let's, let's use another analogy for this first thing. This first idea is choose to be centered. Now use the analogy of a hurricane or a, a tornado. The center of that is very calm. It's very calm and actually there's not a lot of pressure there. That's what gives the storm its power. Now, if you can get centered, you can maybe identify the feelings that come with that emotion. But this, the idea of center is it actually allows you to have more perspective, more balance, more internal strength. It's really where your true power is. Those emotions tend to be on those outer bands of that storm. So choosing to be centered, it, you know, I have, and if you go to my website, spiralimpact.com and go to resources, there's a download there for a centering practice for while you're driving. And it goes into more depth of what that is that I'm going to go into right here. But there's, there's a whole movement around meditation and mindfulness. Breathing is so critically important to being able to be centered. So it's exciting to me to see how much support there is out there for those kinds of concepts. Now in the martial arts, we use center as a way we move physically and it affects everything around us. So, so that's strategy number one is because when you are centered, you do have emotional intelligence. You have more perspective of what is going on around you. And, and so it really opens up your awareness in a way that doesn't if you are immersed, immersed in emotions. So the second thing, the second thing is think about your intention. And this is something probably the, the most forgotten thing when people have conflict is what's the intention? 
Now, I have heard people say, and I've had, I've had clients say, well, my intention is they need to know how I feel. That is nice, but that's, again, if you start there, you're destined to go off the rails uh, because most of the time, people, it, it creates a reaction in people. Or I define intention as what it is that you want that you do not have. What, that's not dependent on another person. So what is it that you want that you do not have that is not dependent on another person? That is a really rich question. And again, I go into it in great depth in my, my book and my, in my workshops, but one, you needing to know my feelings is not, does not fit that category of intention. What does fit that category? I want us to come up with the best, 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 best ideas and products that we can in our work. You know, I want to have a really great time at this event. Now that comes back to my own internal process, which goes back to that number one thing of choose to be center, but that's, that's an intention. I want to have a really great time here. Another intention could be is I really want everybody on our team to feel like they're welcome and that we want to hear what they have to say. That's my intention. So it does involve other people, but it's an intention that um, is not specific about another person because another person could be that. You know, another example would be, you know, if you want to start on time, a lot of times if someone's habitually late, we want to say, you know, it drives me nuts that you're always late. It makes me angry and frustrated that you're late. But the intention, if you go back to it, is I want us to start on time. And that creates a whole different conversation than if you um, call out your emotions around somebody being late. And again, just think of what is your intention that that thing you don't have that you want. And so the number three is to acknowledge what is and ask open-ended questions. Okay, so what you wanna do is acknowledge, well, this is really a difficult situation. How, how are you experiencing it? Or, you know, acknowledge is I'm feeling really awkward and would you be open? Could we have a conversation about this? Um, or it could be, um, just help me understand how you, how, how you see this. How does this strike you? I love that word. How does this strike you? So I get into, I get into questions, asking questions. And again, there's lots of prompts I have in, in, in my book and in my other work, but think about those three things. Instead of sharing your feelings or your emotion or reacting out of your emotions, think about getting centered because sometimes things just solve themselves when you get centered, truly centered, to think about what your intention is, and then be acknowledging and asking questions. And that is it. If you'd like to see this play out a little bit more with my Aikido, there is a link here at the end of this. But um, that's it for me right now. Have a great rest of the day, and I so appreciate you listening in. Thanks, bye-bye.